Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm not sure what that hand was about. Welcome back to my channel and hello and welcome if it is your first time here. Really nice to have you with us. If you've just happened upon this video and you have no idea who the face staring back at you is, my name's Georgie. I've been working in the West End and in shows in London for the past eight years and I thought I'd start this little channel to chat about theatre and give you guys some tips and little bits of inside info because I feel like I've acquired enough information about auditions now to sink a ship. I've done probably over a hundred auditions, at least, in my time, so I feel like I'm maybe qualified as a bit of a stretch. I know what I'm talking about when it comes to musical theatre auditions. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my top 10 audition songs to avoid. Like, do not touch them with a barge pole. Before we get into the video, do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already for more videos like this one, lots of tips and insider info on auditions for the West End and musical theatre. Hit the subscribe button, turn your notification bell on. Also, if you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up so that I know. So if you want to find out what top 10 audition songs to avoid, just keep watching the video. Number one is songs that you can't sing. Now I know that sounds a little bit obvious, but hear me out. There are loads and loads of amazing songs in musical theatre. So many great belt numbers. Like really high soprano songs. And I know what you're thinking. Why would I take a song to an audition that I can't sing? That's foolish. It happens a lot. I am guilty of this. Loads of people I know have told me they've done it. It's just setting yourself up for failure. If something's a bit out of your range, something's a bit high for you, just don't go near it. Another thing people do is lower the key. That You can find like things online that lower the key of songs to make them fit into your vocal range better. People kind of know what key the song was in originally. It's going to be quite obvious that you've lowered it and also that that's because you can't sing it. So you don't really want to give that impression when you're going into an audition straight away. You want to go in with something that you're really comfortable with and can really show off your singing voice with. Number two is songs that you can't connect to. If you're singing a song that's really emotional and something really dramatic and you're looking at it and you're looking at the lyrics and you just can't feel it, you can't connect to it and you can't understand what the character's going through, do not sing the song because it will show. It doesn't matter how beautifully you sing a song, how amazingly high you can sing, how gorgeous your belt voice is. If you can't connect to a song emotionally, there's literally no point singing it. I feel like with a lot of research and a lot of like looking into characters and looking into songs, you can usually try and find a connection to things. But if you're trying and it's not working and you're really not feeling it, but you can sing it really nicely, I'd still say, nah. Number three is songs that are hard to play. And this one's for your pianist. Auditions are a very quick turnaround. They're very, very fast paced normally, especially when you're going in for a first round where you're taking in a song that is your own and the pianist may not know. They probably do, but they won't have had time to look over it. Don't take something that is really, really hard for them to play. For example, something like Jason Robert Brown, Sometime, things like that, really quite tricky to play. Never heard what just followed by a honeymoon where suddenly he'll realize he saddled with a nut and want to kill me, which is- Thankfully, in most auditions, the pianists are absolutely glorious. They're all so, so talented. But it's really a big ask to just go in, meet someone, be like, hi, how are you? Can you please play this 10 page sometime song for me with no preparation? <laughs> be kind to your pianist. They're gonna have to play for a lot of people that day. They're ultimately there to help you. Also make sure you go through the song properly with the pianist before you start singing, but more on that in an upcoming video. Number four is songs that fail when you're nervous. Let me explain. What I mean by that is, if you've got like, you know, your fave shower song, say you're belting out to find gravity in your shower and you're like, I basically am Medina Menzel, great. <laughs> but if you then have practiced this song in a more kind of stressful environment or in front of people and it's gone not quite as good as it did in the shower, don't sing it. In my experience, when you get into the audition, the song is probably gonna go more how it did in front of people in the stressful situation than it did in the shower. So I would steer clear of singing it in front of an audition panel until you are 100% comfortable with said song. <laughs> Number five is a brand new song. If you have had an audition through and you don't have the perfect song for it and you think, ah, need to find something, and you go through your rep and, or go through all your songs and you find the perfect song, but your audition's tomorrow and you have no idea how the melody goes, you don't know the words, nothing, do not sing it. It is a recipe for disaster. Sing something that you know 
super super well that is the most important thing because when nerves come into play and when you're in a different environment and you're slightly uncomfortable and on edge you need something that you know like the back of your hand i don't know why people say like no like the back of your hand i don't think i'd be able to pick the back of my hand out of lineup anyway always sing something that you are so comfortable with you could recite the words standing on your head, knitting a jumper. Do not take in a new song that you don't know the words to. It's just not a good idea. Number six is a song that you don't understand. If you're learning a new song or singing a song, you're just having a nice sing and you're kind of thinking, yeah, this voice sounds, voice sounds really good today. And then you think about what you're singing and you're like, I have no idea what this means. Don't sing it. Quite often in songs, there are a lot of lines that don't makes sense immediately and you never know you might be brought up on it and asked oh, what does that line mean or what do you think of that line you don't want to be put in an uncomfortable situation where you have to be like i don't know <laughs> if you're singing a song and you think to yourself i don't really know what this is about or even just a line if you don't know what a line is about find out but if you really don't know don't sing the song there is no point singing something you don't understand because it will come across in your performance it's so so obvious when people sing about things that they don't understand or if even just a line that's got a word in that you don't know what it means find out before you go to the audition you don't want to look stupid and you don't want to be asked a question that you don't know the answer to number seven is songs with an awkward instrumental break so you know you have those lovely songs really beautiful melody really great story everything like that and you're singing 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 telling this wonderful story and then there's like six counts of eight instrumental and you just stood there trying to act wanting the ground to swallow you <laughs> stay clear of those songs it is uncomfortable enough doing an audition and going in there and putting yourself out there you don't want to put yourself under extra pressure to come up with the goods. I've heard horror stories of people freaking out when they have a long instrumental in their song and then kind of adding in things that they maybe shouldn't have done. <laughs> Try and stay clear of songs with a long instrumental break because ultimately the audition panel want to hear you sing. They've asked you to prepare a song. They haven't asked you to come in and stand staring off wistfully into the distance. Stay clear of songs with long instrumentals. It just adds on time for everyone and is ultimately really uncomfortable for you. <laughs> Number eight is songs with lots of cuts. This is so important because at the beginning of your audition, you're gonna go over to the pianist, have a chat, show them, you know, a cut in your music, show them the tempo and things like that. If you've got a million cuts, A, you're gonna be there for ages at the beginning talking to the pianist. B, it's gonna be really difficult for the pianist, especially if they're awkward cuts. I don't mind a little cut here and there. A cut's fine. We need cuts, but not lots of awkward cuts at weird points in the song. It's just gonna be super difficult for the pianist. They're gonna be rummaging around with all the bits of paper. It's just much better to avoid cuts as much as you can. Obviously there are exceptions and a few cuts is fine, but just make sure they're in appropriate places and there's not too many scattered around. Number 10. This is future Georgie here. Uh, it's This is number nine and I apparently can't count. Sorry is songs out of your casting type. Now this is kind of a bit of a flexible one, but I ultimately do think it's important, especially when you're starting out, to stick to this. I think you need to know yourself as an actor, as a performer. You need to know what parts you're gonna be up for, what is appropriate for you to be singing, what is gonna show you off to the best of your ability and show your talent off the best. And I definitely think something that will help that is singing a song that is gonna show you off to the best of your ability. And ultimately, a song that is your casting type will do that. Something that is in your casting type, because that's just gonna be so much easier for you and so much easier for the casting team to see where you fit and something that's gonna show you off the very best that it can. And finally, number 10, songs that are on currently in the West End. Again, can be flexible on this one, but in my opinion, I just think it's better to steer clear of these songs while they're in the West End because they're being heard all the time, they're being talked about all the time, they're being played all the time, everyone knows them really, really well. There's people playing them at this moment in time who are singing them really, really well. So I just think it's better to leave them to it sing something else. There's so much great stuff out there as well. Then you're not going to be singing something that everybody's singing because people probably will gravitate towards those songs because they're hearing them all of the time. So if you sing something different, that's ultimately going to make you different and stand out. There you go. Don't say I never give you nothing. There's so much great musical theatre out there. There's so many great songs out there. So you don't need to sing songs that are on in the West End currently if you don't have to. So there you go. Those are my top 10 audition songs to avoid. I hope that you found this video helpful. 
please let me know if you did I'd love to hear your opinion so please leave me a comment down below sharing with me if you have ever made any of these audition song mistakes and also if you have any more to add to the list because I'm sure there's some I've missed if you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up so that I know and subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads more videos like this one I'm thinking there's going to be a bit of a series coming up so watch this space also if you want to follow me on my other social media platforms I have Instagram I have Twitter I've got it all follow me over there I love me a bit of social media so I'm always on them always keeping you up to date with the more personal side of my life if you care about that <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this video I hope you have a lovely rest of the day and I'll see you again in the next one bye